Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Maggie. I'm a fourth year medical student and when I was applying to medical school, I was able to get a 516 on my MCAT and recently I took step one and it just like when I was preparing for step one and trying to figure out how the heck to study for this test and do well like the first time and not screw up, I was just super overwhelmed and there's just so much information online. It's hard to find kind of one resource that just like tells you everything you need to know. So hopefully that will be this video for you for the MCAT, I will go into everything about how to study, make a study plan, schedule, example schedules, and all the tips I could possibly think to give you so you know what plan to make and resources to use, and you can crush the MCAT. All right, let's jump right into it and talk about the perfect study plan, and I'm going to give you examples of a daily schedule for each chunk of the plan. Disclaimer, of course, this is how I really love to study for the MCAT. It worked so, so well for me, but use this as inspiration rather than a rule to come up with a perfect study plan that works for you. So my study plan was going with the three phases. So phase one is content review. Phase two is passage-based practice. And phase three is passage-based practice with all AAMC material. So let's take a deep dive into what each of those are. Phase one, by content review, I mean the set of books that you buy for the MCAT cat to study, you're going to just go through every chapter. The only practice questions I did for this were the questions at the end of each book. And be sure to not skip the cars book because I know it's like the most boring thing in the world to read and you might want to just like dive in with one passage per day to start practicing but this is where you start learning car strategy really early on and figuring out how to go about this I swear this is like cars is nothing like anything in undergrad it is such a beast at least it was for me and I read every chapter in the cars book to learn how to tackle cars once I got through the cars book but I was still in the content review phase then that's when I would switch to like free Jack Weston passage practice and maybe do like one passage a day or one every other day. I think I did one passage a day and literally gave myself 45 minutes to an hour to go through it and try to implement those strategies and like reinforce the strategy side of things. And then also just like figuring out how the heck to like really actually understand the passages and actually be able to answer questions from it and just started out really, really slow. And then I would go from like 45 minutes and then slowly wean down closer to 15 to 10 minutes towards the end of my content review. So an example daily schedule of what this would look like if you're in your phase one of studying, wake up and then start studying by 8 a.m. I like to do this because the test is gonna be at 8 a.m. So I like to train my brain from day one that 8 a.m. means time to focus and eat breakfast and all that good stuff beforehand. So 8 a.m. I would start, I would, maybe this is like halfway into content review phase. So I do one passage, spend an hour doing that and reviewing it. And then I spend the rest of my day going through somewhere between two to four chapters. I would always have a hard cutoff at 4 p.m. to avoid burnout because this is a marathon, not a sprint. And that's it for phase one. Just reading chapters, doing questions at the end of the book and figuring out what the heck Cars is all about. And then just be sure that you're kind of trying to actively read the chapter. You can pause, not look at the book and be like, okay, what did I just read? I think that's a really good thing to make sure you're like intaking what you're reading because it's hard to like I do not read textbooks in med school to learn. So it's crazy that this worked out so well for me, but just try not to, to passively read, but then also don't take tons of notes and hundreds of flashcards every single chapter because you're going to take way too long to get through the chapters. And it's not about memorizing every little thing in phase one. Think of this more as your first pass because in phase two is when we're going to start like really ingraining the details and memorizing those details into our brain, not phase one. This is just first pass of the material. Next is phase two. So you've gotten through all the chapters in your content review books and now you're ready to take what you learned and put it into practice you're going to get a question bank and you're going to do questions passage-based questions every day the key with phase two is to start timing yourself so time yourself from day one of phase two but maybe don't hold yourself to the exact test day pace you need just time yourself to see where you're at and then have it be a goal that by the time you're halfway through phase two, you are always timing yourself and 
you're able to stick to the test day pace that you need. The second thing that I added to phase two that was different than phase one is incorporating flashcards. So I didn't do a lot of flashcards for phase one because like we said, it would just take forever. I would never get through the book. But for phase two, once I started to get an idea from reviewing my questions of like what I keep missing over and over and over, like something is not sticking. Those dang SN2 reactions from OCHEM, I missed every single question about them, then they are worthy of having a flashcard. But I don't just like, make, let's say we do 40 questions and then I'm reviewing. I don't make a flashcard on every single missed question. I read it, I understand it, and I'm like, hmm, okay, that makes sense. But I only really made a flashcard if I noticed like the fifth time, I'm like, oh my God, like this topic in particular, I'm missing over and over and over. Also at the time I hated Anki and I made handmade flashcards, which is so funny to me. Also something I do not do in med school, although maybe I really just need to like start studying it in med school like I did for the MCAT because I swear like it's the most efficient quality studying I've ever done in my life. Anyway, I digress. Okay, here's a daily example of what phase two would look like. So again, wake up, start, um, well, eat breakfast, all that good stuff, start studying at 8 a.m. I would do three cars passages, which would take 30 minutes because of course it's timed and then give myself 30 minutes to review. Obviously in the beginning of phase two, I could not do three cars passages in 30 minutes, but I had kind of whittled down to maybe like 15 minutes, like around that. So somewhere by, by around halfway through phase two, I was able to do that and then stuck with it for the rest of my studying. And then I would do one of the science sections that I had planned for the day. So maybe 40 questions and um, after that hour of cars, review it, have lunch, maybe do 20-ish, 30 questions after lunch and then do flashcards, like make new flashcards and or just do old flashcards and kind of like quiz myself and kind of just try to like make things stick that aren't sticking kind of thing. And then have a hard cut off at 4 p.m. as always because marathon not sprint. All right, now you're ready for phase three. You're gonna buy the AMC MCAT bundle and the goal of phase three is to finish that bundle before test day. And the only thing different between this and phase two is that one, you're using all AMC material, unless you need a little bit extra. Maybe there's like a weak area where you need to use some extra questions from your last QBank to like really double down on your weaknesses or you just like run out of questions from the bundle and you need to like, but otherwise you're using all A, A, and C material. And two, you should have nailed down your test day pacing by now. You're always timing yourself when you're doing question sets and you're not running out of time. If you are, then you're like really like focusing on how you can get your timing down better, like from the beginning of phase three. So that like by the end of phase three, you're like, okay, I'm good. I'm not going to run out of time on test day. So again, a daily example of what your schedule would look like for this. Pretty much the same as last time with the exception that maybe you're fitting in more questions. Like maybe instead of 60 questions in the early, like before lunch, you're doing 80 questions. And then after lunch, you're doing 60 more questions instead of like 40 kind of thing. So maybe you're really working on building the stamina in this third phase, but otherwise the schedule looks the same. And for your flashcards, in that end of day review, maybe you're doing a little bo bit more like targeted quizzing, you're taking blank study sheets and filling it out because you have taken a lot of practice tests by now and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to nail down this, this, and this topic. I know these are my weaknesses. And you're just like really doubling down on your weaknesses that last kind of hour of the day, but you are still having a hard cutoff at 4 p.m. as always. And speaking of quizzing yourself and sheets, you should download the free biochem quiz sheets that we have and they're like one of our most popular freebies and it's what I use. That was one of the topics that I kept missing over and over and over related to like the glycolysis pathways. And I'm like, okay, this is what I need to double down on in phase three. So that's a really good example. Plus like also free quiz sheets. So download those below. <laughs> Last but not least, for the perfect study plan, we have to incorporate a lot of full-length practice exams. So take one on the very first day of your studying. I do not care if you know nothing and it feels pointless. You need to take a diagnostic and have a baseline, okay? I didn't follow my own advice for step one and it was dumb. Take one on day one. <laughs> Okay, now we got that out of the way. I personally took 13 over the span of uh, five months and it was perfect. I took diagnostic, one in the middle of content review, one at the end of content review, and then four in phase two, four or five, and then like five in phase three, something like that. Here is my score progression of my MCAT scores. I definitely read on Reddit that like I would have a score jump from like going from the third party exams to A and C, and I totally did. I was super pumped. So yeah, I was really happy with like my score progressions and 
so that's kind of like how I fit that into my three phases of study schedule. And I had a very like methodical rotation, I guess, in phase two and phase three. So I would kind of get two weeks of um, two passes of each of the science days that I had. Um, so I always started with one hour of cars in the day. I had three different days, bio day, chem day, psych day. Bio to me, meant biology or biochem. Chem to me meant chem, o chem, gen chem, physics. And then psych day, obviously psych and soch. And then if there was like a weakness that I needed to add in some extra o chem days, I would do that. So my two week kind of like 10 to 14 day rotation was bio, chem, psych, bio, chem, psych, full length practice test, and then one to two days to review. And then within that, obviously rest days as needed. I was working as an EMT at the time. So, but that was like, if you're just counting the study days, that was my rotation is beautiful, beautiful. So I could make sure that I evenly progressed all the sections with cars every day. And then everything else had a, like every third day I did it. It was perfect. I highly recommend trying it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about how to effectively review your full length practice exams, because I think this is so important to improving over time. Like my score progression was beautiful. And I feel like it's because I was so diligent about reviewing my practice exams. Again, did not take my own advice for step one, but ha, step two, I'll, I'm gonna take my own advice that I'm giving you. I will, act, I will be doing these things, I promise. Okay. So you're going to make a table and you're going to have it be like, this is your like, why I miss things table. You're going to go through every single practice question. You are going to take multiple days, especially that diagnostic exam. I swear to God, that took me like three plus days and it was torture and I thought I'd never get through it. It was so hard. I knew none of the material, but I still reviewed every single freaking question. Okay. They're not all going to be that hard. I swear like phase three, when I was taking AMC practice tests, I literally could do that in one day. Easy. But yeah, phase one, give yourself two days, maybe three, because you need time. Do not rush this. So when you're going through every single question, whether you got it right or wrong, because you might have gotten it right, but actually missed a concept and like didn't, you thought you got it right for one reason and now which actually is something else and you didn't know that concept. So you're going to make a table and the headings are going to be, you can write down the passage in question if you, in case you want to look back at it. I literally never did, but I always put it. Um, and then topic, for example, OCHEM or physics and subtopic like for OCHEM SN2 reactions for physics, light and mirrors. Um, and then you're gonna write down why you missed it, but this is gonna be short, like misread the question, didn't know the concept, ran out of time, silly mistake. It's gonna be short so that like when you're done reviewing, you can quickly tally how much in each category. Then you're gonna have explanation. This is like a freaking paragraph. I am not kidding. I wrote so much and it was so helpful to work through why I got this wrong and like what I could have, like what did I miss on the table? Like I didn't notice that the decimal was here. And so I like literally full on explanation. And then something I did for step one that I think I'm gonna add to this whole plan that I'm gonna use for step two is how not to miss next time. This can be shorter too, just so you can like tally up and know like what is gonna be the biggest key thing between now and your next practice exam to not miss this type of question again. So for step one, a lot of it was just like, I need to watch Sketchy Micro. I need to watch Sketchy Micro. I haven't watched this for Sketchy Micro. Um, but for the MCAT, it could be like, for example, the biochem quiz sheets. So like by the end, okay, you've reviewed the whole exam and you're going through and reading, like you're tallying up like your how not to miss next time. And you read that there's so many things that say, oh, learn the glycolysis pathway better. And then I won't miss this next time. If there's like six different things that say that, then between now and the next practice exam, you're going to use those biochem quiz sheets and nail the glycolysis pathway, know it like the back of your freaking hand. And then the next time you review a practice exam, check and see if like you got a bunch of glycolysis questions, right? So this little last piece is kind of the new one that I think is really just, it gives you like an action step or it keeps you from being overwhelmed because maybe there's like a million things you could do to like not miss all these questions next time but you could just tally up and be like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on the one that has the most tallies, like sketchy micro has the most tallies. So between now and the next test, I'm going to do tons of sketchy micro. Micro is not a thing on the MCAT, but sketchy biochem or glycolysis quiz sheets. That has the most tallies. So instead of being overwhelmed and being like, ah, what should I focus on that last hour of the day? Um, you're like, bam, I know what to focus on. <laughs> 
Last but not least, let's cover resources. I'm going to go through this quickly because I realized what we should do is put the Biochem quiz sheets with a resource page and then you'll kind of have it there and I'll star the ones that I would buy. So if you don't want to be like overwhelmed and be like, ah, which should I pick? You can just pick the ones I star and bam, you don't have to overthink it. I'm, I realize I overthink a lot these days. So if you're like me, then hopefully that helps. Quickly, I'll just put in like my two cents about things I've had personal experience with. Like for QBank, just buy UWorld. Do not think of it anymore, just buy it. It's like, just buy you world key bank. Content review books, I would recommend Kaplan. I think the Princeton review is a little too like nitty gritty. And then I used exam crackers the first time for the one that expired and I loved it, but I feel like it's more expensive than the others and it's not that popular. So I don't know if you see it and they have an updated version, like it's definitely a good option. So either that or Kaplan is what I would recommend. Practice exams, you should get like three with your book set and then in the AMC bundle. So I would recommend uh, Blueprint for getting like three to five more. I got four for phase two for that middle part. Free resources, Jack Weston, Khan Academy, and Anki. I didn't use Anki at the time, but I love it for med school. I would just like caution you on using pre-made decks. Like I really love using, using your own flashcards, but do what works best for you. And then an extra resource that I have to mention because I love it so much for med school is Sketchy. I don't know that they're in cats the MCAT sketchy is as like mind blowingly out of this world amazing like it is for med school, but you can try it. Like they have some free videos or a free trial and just see if you think it would be helpful. And especially if you have the extra money, like try it. Um, if you don't have the extra money, don't worry about not having it. Like I didn't have it when I studied for MCAT and it's fine. I just want to mention it because I will truly do love it for med school. <laughs> All right, I hope you got the most insane amount of value from that video and or ask all your questions in the comments and I will answer every single one unless this video like goes viral and there's like thousands, but I doubt that will happen. So like I'll probably answer every single one. And for the next video to watch, be sure to watch the med school application timeline. This was helpful, that one will be helpful. So watch that one next and um, thanks for supporting my channel.